Hi, I'm Tony. Welcome to Sports Bike Shop's video about the LS2 Explorer helmet. This is LS2's new for 2021 adventure helmet that actually offers quite a high specification for the price. The LS2 Explorer's shell is made from fiberglass and this size medium helmet weighs in on our scales at 1623 grams. That's actually a bit below average for an adventure helmet based on our research for these videos and it's lighter than most adventure lids available in this price bracket. The shell has plenty of ventilation options. On the chin there's a sliding vent that draws open two shutters just in here and it allows air to flow through two metal grills to the inside of the helmet. On top, there are two inlet vents under the peak here that open and close on these sliders. And they're easy enough to get to by either putting your hand under or over the peak. Then you get eight exhaust venting holes. Six of them are switchable. These sliders here cover three holes each and they allow air to escape. And then the final two vent holes are always open and they sit just in front of these outlets here. The EPS impact liner for this helmet has really good sized channels throughout. So there's plenty of opportunity for incoming air to circulate before it escapes through those outlet vents. The peak on this helmet, it's got louvres in it, these cuts here. And the idea is that the air can flow through the surface rather than catching it and dragging your head back as you ride. So I was riding a Yamaha Tracer 9GT with a big touring screen on it when I reviewed this helmet. And this lid sat quite happily and quietly behind that screen. Uh, we've also had this helmet reviewed by one of our external contributors and he was also really happy with the aerodynamics when riding his BMW R1250 GS Adventure, another bike with a big tall screen on it. It was a slightly different story when he rode his smaller G310 GS, which has a shorter screen, and that was when the ride became noisier. And another one of our team as well, Joel, he's behind the camera today, he's got one of these helmets as well. He rides a Yamaha XT660X Supermoto, which obviously has no screen, and he also finds that he gets quite a bit of turbulence and noise when he's riding at motorway speeds. And there's not the option with this helmet to run in what's called street mode either. That's when you take the peak off of an adventure helmet and ride with just the visor. That can be quite a handy option, especially on longer trips, as when you take that peak off, you get rid of any turbulence that comes from it. But on this helmet, removing the peak leaves you with no way to secure the visor in place. You can run without the visor using goggles for eye protection instead in kind of off-road mode. And once you put goggles in, they do fit quite neatly inside the eye port for this helmet. So LS2 described the visor system on this helmet as quick release. I think they must be talking about something other than the time it takes to remove and refit that visor. You need to prise off these plastic covers on either side of the lid, which then reveals two mounting screws, one of these on either side, and then you undo those to remove the visor before reversing the process to put it back on. I had a couple of practice runs and then set the stopwatch going for my third attempt, and it took me about a minute and 45 seconds to go from visor on to visor off to visor back on again. But once it's fitted, the visor itself gives really good peripheral vision. And it also has a closing tab in the middle, which is quite neat, but it does take a little bit of getting used to. When it's on its final click of travel, you need to give it a firm push right at the end to lock it down like that. To release it, you push this button and that frees the visor for you to lift. It's kind of a two-stage process. First the push and then the lift. It takes a little bit of getting used to, like I said. So the visor is protected against mist by a Pinlock 70 insert. That's the middle level of the Pinlock inserts that are available. And it also covers a huge amount of that inner visor. So you know the beading around the edge of it won't get in the way of your view. That main visor is also backed by an internal sun visor. It operates on a switch on the left-hand base of the lid here. And that visor has plenty of depth to give you good glare protection. It's not coated to be anti-mist. So you want to be ready to open that main visor slightly and get some clearing air through to get rid of any mist on that inner sun visor. So switching to the inside, the lining for the LS2 Explorer is fully removable and it's also nice and plush. Our reviewer who rode a long way in this helmet found that the cheek pads had a tendency to come unpopped a few times in the two and a half thousand miles that he covered while wearing this lid, but he did really praise the comfort that the helmet offers. The cheek pads are emergency release. It's not something you want to think about too much, but it means they can be removed while you're still wearing the lid, which makes it easier for a medic to take the helmet off of you if they need to. There are no recesses in the EPS for speakers to sit in, meaning you'll need to hope there's enough room between your ears and the liner of the helmet to fit those speakers in. 
Both of the riders I know who tried this helmet have been able to do that. They both fitted an intercom and we both had room for the speakers and they've been happy with the comfort once that intercom was in. There is another issue, which is finding a smooth enough bit of surface to attach the control unit to. Our long distance reviewer, David, he had to put it towards the back of the lid just here and he says that made it a little bit awkward to use the buttons to control the intercom. So the last thing to talk about with the interior for this helmet is the strap fastener, which is always an important thing to talk about with any helmet. It's a micrometric buckle and it has a metal slider, but the opening is a bit innovative on this helmet. You pull this tab here and that allows the slider to come out of its housing, just there. At first that feels a bit unusual and it's possibly a little bit overcomplicated, but after a while it does become quite normal and intuitive. It's actually easier to use it when you're wearing the helmet rather than having the helmet on a desk like I've got it here. So last details before I wrap up, sizing and approvals. The LS2 Explorer comes in sizes extra small to double extra large, and there are three shells to cover those sizes. So helmet sizes extra small and small share the smallest shell, the middle shell covers helmet sizes medium and large, and then the biggest of the shells covers XL and double XL. The Explorer is approved to ECE 2205 for the road and it also has the ACU Gold sticker, so you're okay to use it for track and competition use if you want to. It's not been tested yet by the UK government's Sharp Impact Testing Scheme. It's unlikely to be tested anytime soon either, as the people behind Sharp say it's more important to test full face and flip front helmets because there are more people who buy those styles of helmet. Anyway, the LS2 Explorer brings something new to the adventure helmet category. There are a few bits of this helmet that will annoy some people. The fact an intercom becomes awkward to fit is likely to be the main concern for touring riders. And the aero being less than ideal on naked bikes and behind shorter screens is also likely to upset some people who don't ride behind tall screens all the time. But the LS2 Explorer is very well appointed, especially when compared with its competition at this price. The weight's reasonable, the venting's been popular with the people who've tested this helmet for, for us, and the anti-mist pinlock helps things a lot. If you're after an adventure lid and you aren't looking for one of those pricier top line lids, then this is definitely worth a look. I hope that tells you everything you wanted to know about the LS2 Explorer helmet, but if there is anything you'd like to ask or to add, then please pop a comment below. Thanks for watching.